Welcome to our 2022 year in review with our entertainment pundit, Michael Nichols Pate, on the cross border interviews with Chris Brown. We are going to be recapping the biggest things that happened in the entertainment world in 2022. We're going to be talking about the winners, the losers, and the highlights. Michael, how are you? I am suffering from laryngitis due to allergies and a fluctuating temperature that allowed pollens to say, surprise, bitch. Um, so I'm thriving um, in a state of chaos that can only be described as chaos. Um, I'm halfway through the Lindsay Lohan holiday movie. Um, On December which, 23rd? That's a really long time to wait to watch that movie. What can I say? It's Lindsay Lohan and she deserved a special place a special place in the holiday timeline. So before we get into the big stories, I should preempt this by saying that we are recording this in November because as you have probably heard over the last few weeks of the show, I am heading into surgery on December 2nd. Michael is heading into some busy times for all the holidays for himself, plus his birthday. So we had to we had to record this a little bit earlier, but it is coming out on December 23rd, two days before Christmas which we are so excited. Um, so we are going to be recapping a lot over the next hour. We're going to try and keep it to an hour. Probably not because it's a lot of stuff that we have to do here. So let's get it right out of the way. Let's start with the biggest, in your opinion, as of recording, the biggest song of 2022. Michael, what was it for you? Well, you see, as the homosexual that frequents drag scenes, um, you would have thought Break My Soul by Beyonce. Mm -hmm. is the biggest song of the year. And regardless of how you feel, I mean, there was drag <laughs> running to learn that song and those lyrics and have a routine for it. I went to a drag show three days after the song came out and there were already like three queens doing that song. So I would say it's that I've also not listened to a lot of new music this year because I've been... I thought I was the only one because I was going through it. I was like, I have not heard any of these mu this music or any of these new artists that are coming out. And I'm going, have I missed it that much this year? No, I just, I, I've been so turned off from it. I've just been doing a lot of musical theater. So I could be like, yeah, best song of the year is. Um, Don't rain on my parade. Right? No, it's inner white girl from strange loop, but no one's going to know that. So. I, well, <laughs> I listen, I think everyone should know that if you still can, this is definitely an unnecessary plug, but if you still can go to the city and see Strange Loop, it's an incredible show. Um, also, Antihero by Taylor Swift suddenly has gone everywhere. I'm seeing yeah. it all over my. I'm seeing that a lot too. And I'm like, what is this all about? Because in, in our last entertainment rundown, we talked about how stupid taylor swift was by releasing the 3 a.m edition of the midnight edition of the six o'clock 4 p.m and the eastern standard time edition for fuck's sakes like honestly i can't <laughs> wait i can't wait for the 3 p.m pacific standard time or the greenwich mean time edition of the, sh uh, the show or the album well now if you buy all four album covers you can have a, make a clock out of it Sorry, I just needed to drink my uh, little cup of tea. Also, I feel like I keep seeing Made You Look by Megan Trainer everywhere also. I don't Maybe know that's who that I'm is. On... Megan Trainer, she did that. I'm all, all about that base, uh, all the, the base. Oh, She's crap. married yeah. to the freaking Spy Kid guy. <laughs> she sure did marry him. I'm like, I wonder whatever happened to him. And then he showed up on my Instagram one day. Well, not him. I think it's their nanny who goes around with them and films Megan Trainer and this oh, are you talking about the the gay one Chris? Yeah, is there is that No, that's her No, that's their friend but like he's definitely getting paid to manage their social media cuz she, again, she's blowing up on TikTok and that song is quite literally everywhere unless it's just because I'm a homosexual and I'm on gay TikTok and that's the reason I keep seeing it. But I'm on Instagram. I've been told that I, I'm an old man, according to my husband. So there, that shows you how mm. much. Mm. <laughs> I can't eventually, wait. To... Go ahead. No, eventually TikTok will, uh, the TikToks will get to Instagram. 
Oh, they already are. They already are. They're so <laughs> gone. It is bad. Um, I'm going to say for me, and this is going to be a little controversial because as you may uh, be aware, for those who are listening or watching this, I am totally up with the music. I am so down with it. I, like People just know me. I'm going a little oh. bit country for mine because I think this artist did not get his due this year. And that is my, my, my good, my good musician friend, not my friend, but I wish he was my friend. If he wants to come on the show, I'd love to have him on the show. And that's Keith Urban. And it's his newest song actually, because I was going through and I was like, what song have I heard listened to over and over and over and over and over again. And it's Brown eye baby. If you haven't listened to it, I know this is going to be controversial for the gays who are listening to this because of Michael. Go listen to it. Go go expand your horizon and go listen to some country music. Why controversial to the gays because of Michael? Just because I don't like Nicole's husband doesn't mean I'm controversial. I'm just putting that out there. I'm just putting that out there. I think music this year sucked, to be honest. To, to put it blankly, to put it uh, bluntly, like I know uh, as of recording this, uh, the Grammy nominations just came out and Beyonce and Jay-Z were tied for the most nominations. Adele was thrown Good in there. That. Exactly. Like she released I an album? No, they just, they, they oh, Jay-Z did? No, yeah, Adele. I think so. Didn't she? Olivia Rodrigo released her album, and I've just not cared about another musical artist. And you didn't put a, you didn't put him her in the top. I'm shocked. She hasn't released any new music in 2022. Nope. Oh. Last thing she released was Sour in 2021, and then she's just been on tour. She has an album, I think, ready to go. So let's hope it's better than her ex-lover Joshua Bassett's album or sorry not album he keeps releasing EPs is he still promising gay? his albums done he is <laughs> bisexual something he's something driving me insane is what he is so there you go that is our hot take on 2020 in music who would have thought that that would be so controversial I, I'll say it still waiting on my Aaliyah album I, I'll yeah is that still not out from January when we first still talked not about? out Rihanna released new album music this year, finally. A song. I haven't heard it. I've been waiting because I want to see Black Panther before I listen to the song. Just in case. Uh, yeah, just in case it spoils something, yeah. Yeah. Um, you never know with Disney. Yeah, you never know with anything anymore. I just, I'm not a fan of music today like i I've, I've been going through my spotify list all this week getting preparing for this okay grandpa <laughs> like i'm listening to like matchbox 20 i'm listening to train <laughs> i'm listening to like uh foo fighters like the like the good music out there not this like uh i don't i don't even know who's out there today like all these young whippersnappers who are coming up in the uh, the world I just, I don't know. And I, I try, I try my hardest to try and expand my horizon. It's just the horizon that these young people are putting out there. It's just, I, I weep for humanity. If this is the future of music here, people. You need to calm down a little. It's not that serious, Judy. Girl, for me, it was. For me, it was horrible. As, as the Queens would say, it was my animus horribus. It was a bad it year. What? <laughs> I guess it you haven't watched what? The Crown yet. No, girl, I'm waiting for it to all be done so that I can just watch it in one fell swoop rather than I'm going to watch it and then have to wait a year. I, uh, I'm not about that. I know I'm going to be addicted and I know I'm going to be here for it. So But, I you, need but you go to... in. Well, speaking of TV, shoot TV in 2022 and the release of The Crown season five. We look back on 2022 in TV and we saw some highs, some lows. And uh, Michael, for you, what were the top TV shows? And I should preface this. I'm saying what are the top TV shows for you? Because they're all going to be different. Yes, there's some shows that probably got really good reviews, like uh, the Lord of the Rings series, like the House of Dragon. But what did you see? And 
Spoiler, I've not seen You just one. read me like a fucking, you have just read me like a children's book. I absolutely loved Rings of Power. I felt like Rings of Power was one of my favorite things to watch this year. However, I felt like I could not shut the fuck up about the House of Dragon. And I have many opinions about the House of Dragon. It was a cultural reset for me, I think. Like, I have never been so enthralled by two TV shows airing at the same time, especially after being so disappointed with, uh, I tried to watch Lock and Key season three and I haven't even finished it. It was so fucking boring. I have not seen any of those that you have just mentioned. So I feel like, I feel like this is going to be a great segment of this part of the show where we discuss things that Chris has not seen. And Michael has probably not seen the shows that I think are pretty good. So this is going to be quite fun party um so for those who don't know the ring of power is the lord of the rings prequel and the house of dragons is the game of thrones prequel um both ones on amazon prime and ones on hbo yes hbo's game of thrones yes house of dragons she fucked her uncle and her cousin or and her knight in the same episode a girl was here for it she was ready so I guess we're supporting incest now. I listen. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not an incest supporter, but I was watching this. And I'm like, girl, you better get with your uncle. Girl, you know that's the man. Is the you. uncle oh, Matt Smith? Mary Yosis. The uncle is. He is not believable as a villain. No, he never I'll had say it. He he was I'll bad in it. he was bad in Morbius as the villain as well. Oh yeah, that was a joke. It's yeah. Morbin time. Yeah, like seriously, like that movie. We'll talk about movies later on, but that was a movie that should not have been made. I'm going to go a little controversial again. I'm, I, I like going controversial because that's what I do. Uh, my favorite TV show for this year is actually, it came out during the summer and was on Showtime. And both of them actually were on Showtime. One was Gaslit with Sean Penn and Julia Roberts. This is the story of the Attorney General during Richard Nixon's time, and it was during Watergate, and how his wife basically threw the, uh, Nixon and the Attorney General under the bus. Awesome acting. I think it's probably going to be nominated for a few Emmys. Probably not going to win anything because House of Dragons is always better. And I think it's probably uh, one of these movies, that, uh, one of these shows that you should watch. It's only about six episodes. The other one is The First Ladies. Now, Controversial take here. A lot of people were upset about Viola Davis's acting as Michelle Obama. I think she fucking did an amazing job. And those who were coming for her, just back off. She's an Oscar winner. so She did she what can... needed to be done. Exactly. Exactly. Um, Gillian Anderson as Eleanor Roosevelt, lesbian. Loved it. Loved it. Loved it. Loved it. Loved it. And then, oh my God, I can't even remember her name. Uh, what's her? I can picture her. Betty Ford played by Michelle Pfeiffer, which was fantastic casting. Do not go there. Do not go there. You, talk, you talked Pfeiffer. about incest. You talked about incest. You can deal with me talking about Michelle Pfeiffer for at least two minutes, okay? <laughs> but uh... highly recommend those two shows if you have not watched them gaslight gaslit sorry and the first lady good shows i think they're coming out with season two of the first lady which is going to be great because they're going to be following three other new uh uh first ladies so they did eleanor they did betty ford and they did Mich- michelle obama so there's been speculation they're going to do nancy reagan next year which is going to be great and that's going to be awesome i'm really looking forward to it was there any downsides to tv this year for you was there any shows that you watched and you went, what the hell's going on here? Because I, I have one that I kind of. Um, I initially was really into, I watched the first episode of Dahmer and I'm like, I need to take a step back. Yeah. And then I. Does Ryan I, Murphy first, not have to take a step back in 2023? Because he's, he's spreading himself so thin. I hate that, him. Yeah. He's, I'm ready to fight him. Like I will physically fist fight Ryan Murphy if I find him in a parking lot and I will emphatically say that on this show i would just fight him um it just was so like at first i'm like wow this is incredible and then i'm like sitting on it and i'm like i don't feel very good after finishing this first episode let me go back and think about it and think about it and then the more i thought about it the more i'm like this is really icky and then the more stuff that came out about how he basically did not give a fuck about the victim's families or even including them in 
the show just made it feel more gross that I haven't finished it. And then I was having a conversation with someone about how people are now like romanticizing Dahmer and like feeling sorry for him. And uh, fuck that shit. Uh -uh, We're not doing that. I'm not here to give any sort of Jeffrey Dahmer ass bullshit forgiveness arc. No, 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 no. Sorry. He had a tough life. Uh, A lot of people have tough lives and they don't kill and eat men. Exactly. And I would not even say, I'm sorry. You had a tough life. You had a tough life. Deal with it. Everyone else is fuck. Like it's just bad. And now that he's doing a new, he's it's an anthology series, right? He's that he's choosing another monster to choose or uh, another serial killer to promote in season two, if I'm not mistaken. It's huh? So the Jeffrey Dahmer show is a, is a part of an anthology, which he's going to basically fucking a. I that, fucking hate him. This is what Ryan Murphy does. He does <sighs> anthologies. He does feud. He does this. He does everything, right? Uh, American Horror Stories. It's just, and again, this is just correct. Correct me if I'm wrong here, people. Send me your messages. Um, uh, I'm going to quickly take a quick commercial break and we'll be right back after this brief message and we'll be talking about what the fuck I was just actually trying to think about. So be right back, everyone. We pride ourselves on going beyond that 15 second sound bite. Be sure to hit that subscribe button today to be kept in the loop of all the great episodes that are coming up on the show. Also, click on the links in the show notes and follow our social media pages as well. Welcome back, everyone. So, yes, I was correct there. Uh, I just had we had to double check that. Um, it is two more seasons of monsters. So Ryan Murphy is going to be doing more in-depth analysis of these assholes who should not be getting time or day. So yes, I agree with Michael that this is a bad time for TV shows. No, there's been some incredible shows. It's just what the fuck. I think there's been more bad shows than good shows. Again, I think it might be my age, but girl, TV is not how it used to be made. Where, where's where's I think all it's your age too? Where I'm being nice to Michael <laughs> because I don't want to be accused of throwing him under the bus. So no, oh my god, stop! Like we're just living our dreams right now. I sound like a fucking like boy going through puberty over here. So like it's just the dream. It's just the dream. Okay, <laughs> heading into our third segment. This year started off with a bad note. This year started off on a really, really bad note. Um, I shouldn't really say it started off. It, and 2021 ended on a bad note, and 2022 just got off to a really bad start with the passing of Betty White. And there have been a lot of surprising, and I, I, I shouldn't say surprising, but more uh, unfortunate passings this year. Uh, Betty White uh, passed away on December 31st, 2021. In Australia, it was 2022. So I do consider it this year because, well, (laughs) it's one of those weird things. Uh, We had people like Bob Saget pass away. We had uh, Louis Anderson pass away. We had a lot of people uh, pass away. Um, um, Oh, Coolio. I want to say Coolio. No, it's not Coolio. Coolio. Coolio passed away. It was Uh, Coolio. Who else passed away this year, Mike? Cole? Hold on. I literally made a list and you just crossed three of the names off. Um, Leslie Jordan, Angela Lansbury, Queen Lizzie, Naomi Judd, Sydney Poitier, Aaron Carter, Takeoff, Julie Powell. Um, she's the woman who Julie and Julia, the movie was based upon. Robbie Coltrane, Loretta Lynn, Bernard Shaw, Anne Hesch. Uh, Mikhail Gorbachev, yeah. uh, Olivia Newton-John, Michelle Nichols, Pat Carroll, Ivana Trump, Margaret Keene. She's the artist who did the Big Eyes portraits. Yep. Uh, Gilbert Gottfried, Patrick de uh Taylor Hawkins, William Hurt, Mugler, uh, Gaspard Ulliard, to name a few. I know. Few. And I feel like you just barely got to like August. When you're going back in time, right? Like looking at, like listening to those names, I'm like, oh, that happened like two weeks ago. That happened like three weeks ago. And then I'm like, holy, there's been a lot of notable deaths this year. Yeah. It's, yeah. 
it is what it is, right? Like, is there one that you're like, I think the biggest one, we talked about this a little bit in, in the uh, November rundown. I think the biggest one that you and I were both shocked at, and I think we both still are a little taken back by was Leslie Jordan. Um, he, he wasn't sick. He died, unfortunately, by a tragic car accident. Uh, but geez. I would have said Leslie Jordan, but Aaron Carter was actually the first concert I went to. I was a grown ass man, uh, 21 in college, and my friends and I decided to go see Aaron Carter in this bar. And it just was one of like the best nights of our life. And then he came back the following year. So we decided let's go again and do it. So we went and saw him a second time. I never had so much fun seeing Aaron Carter and just kind of all the memories attached to that specific artist and his music and like with friends of mine in college and, and, and the fact that it was my first like concert, like I actually was sad. I actually got choked up. I don't know if it was necessarily his passing, but more so the memories attached to him as an artist but it was it was a little it was rough I'm not gonna lie it was really heartbreaking I was actually there actually was um a heart beating in that area of my chest that normally is a black hole I was gonna say most of the time you're like I didn't know them I didn't like it's not someone who I have emotional connection to but it actually sounds like you're broken up about this I am I'm a little I'm a little sad I did not cry but I definitely i I'm not, it's, it's, it was rough. It was like, wow, this is actually heartbreaking. And I texted my friends I went and saw the show with, and we were talking about it and our memories with regards to the music. And I'm like, this is, this is not me. This is weird, but it's a link I had with this particular artist. Well, there's always a connection whenever that first artist, right? Uh, To me, my first artist will always be Toby Keith, right? I will always remember going to that concert and will always have a connection to him. So every time that he releases new uh, music, I, I'm front and center and buying that album, no ifs, ands, or buts. Even though his music has not been the best lately, but I will still go out and buy his album because I, there's that connection that you do have. And I know that he was uh, battling cancer there this year and he came out earlier in July announcing that. And it's just one of those tragic things that a lot of people are dealing with these days Uh, good times good times always good always good so um we will move on from our uh notable passings and we will go into a kind of a big surprise what was the big surprise moment for you this year? Was there a story that came out? We went, whoa, this is huge. I know we kind of just talked about the Aaron Carter issue a little bit, but was there a big surprise for the, in the entertainment industry for you this year? I think in a bit of levity, I have to talk about Lizzo playing Madison's Crystal Flute. It okay. was just, it was one of those stories that was so... The Republican, Bizarre. like the Lost right their went Lost crazy. Their <laughs> Lost their minds. It was just, it was such a wild, unhinged time to be in the world and see that happen and see people lose their minds over a damn flute that sat in a box for years, for a that, century. That I guarantee you no one knew that existed, existed. until she... No one knew until she took, until they were like, hey, we want you to play as flute since you're like a renowned flautist. Like, bitch, if anyone's qualified to play the fucking flute that James Madison one time held in his hand, it's motherfucking Lizzo. Like, that probably never people. played it either. <laughs> no, she did play it. No, he, what, Madison played it? Oh, yeah, he may, he may have played it once or twice. But like, like, got it girl, as a gift. Yeah. It's not that serious. Y'all need to calm the fuck down. I, I I agree. Um, for me, I, I I wouldn't say it's the biggest surprise, but it was the biggest shock for me that Benifer actually got married. Stop! <laughs> I was like, Stop. okay, with the with the reputation of Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck, I was bombarded with what? Huh? No. Wait. What? Huh? What? You better leave Benifer alone. <laughs> Why? 
<laughs> no, it was it was it was a moment. The fact that they even it, got back together was weird. Exactly, and there was a lot of people. Well, you and I basically talked about it on the show a few times. It was like, oh, it's a we PR thought it was stuff. a publicity stunt. <laughs> exactly, and now they're like I'm still convinced, not convinced. happily married. Je- Jennifer Lopez is like Jennifer Gardner and I are like good friends. We have great parenting, and I'm like, what what is going on? Like. When 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 Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez become the standard bearer of good coupling in Hollywood, something happens. You let Jenny from you leave Jenny from the block. <clears throat> and the other one that I was surprised at, and I think this is not a big surprise, but it was more of a I didn't see that coming. I, I'm not sure if it happened in 2021 or 2022, but I think it happened in 2022. But Pete Davidson and Kim Kardashian were an item. What? Oh yeah, they sure was. What? I was like, what? What? What's what's going on? What's going on here? I w- I'm not sure if it was just for six months and it was just the early part of 2022, but I was very surprised that that was even on the I like, yeah. Kim Kardashian said, "I see Megan Kelly got herself one. I want one." And now they're broken up, right? Yeah, they are. He's really kind of devastated about it. I do feel a little bad, but like obviously he was the rebound. From, from you go from Kanye or sorry, Ye West to Pete Davidson. Fucking Pete Davis, a little skeet. Um, we will move on to our next segment, and that is the top movie in our opinion. Now, there's been a lot of movies that have come out over the last year, and in this segment, I want you to t- uh, we can talk about streaming movies, we can talk about movies that have only been out in uh, the um the movie theaters i don't know why i blanked on the fact that i couldn't think of movie theaters because i don't think i've been to one forever so that's why so for you actually no you you did the first few i'm gonna take this one i'm gonna be i'm I'm gonna be controversial i'm gonna be controversial because that's what i like to do on my show controversial jesus i'm gonna go to a movie that came out over the summer it was streaming on Paramount Plus. I really, really liked it. I think it's probably one of the best movies that's come out this year. It's probably not going to win any awards. I just liked it as of recording this. <laughs> so I should preface this as of recording this. The best movie, the top movie for me this year was Jerry and Marge Go Large, <laughs> which was streaming on Paramount Plus. And it is about uh, a retire two retirees in I believe it was West Virginia or Virginia, one or the other, and they play the lotto. They they rig the lotto system and they find the code to continuously win the lotto system. Brian Cranston is Jerry in it, and he does a great performance, and I highly recommend it. It's on Paramount Plus. Go get it for just even seven days and watch this movie it's a fun light-hearted movie don't come for me don't don't at me no one no one is don't ticket talk you me and the other one is the unbearable weight of massive talent with nicholas cage awesome also another great movie that came out earlier this year michael what's your top movie what do you think mine is if i had to guess Hmm. I I don't know. Better Nate than ever? <laughs> God no. I don't know what. Drive my car. That came out in 2021 though. No, I thought it was 2022. No, it was nominated last year for the Oscars. Coda? Yeah, but it was nominated up against Coda and it came out in 2021. So then Coda would be mine. It was Drive My Car. No, Coda came came out in 2021 as well. Fuck, do I just not like movies that came out this year? Oh, I had a hard time, girl. I had a hard time this year. No, I was like, it's Drive My Car. It's the best thing I saw. The only reason you you watched it in 2022, but it came out in 2021 because it was nominated for the 2022 Oscars. Fuck, I was like ready. I'm like, this is it. This is the moment. Um, Like, Like... because that was nominated for the they won best foreign fee, film at the Oscars in 2021. Uh, so in 2022, it won. Um, Halloween Kills, Halloween Ends wasn't your favorite. That was not great. I know I liked it. It wasn't stellar. See how they run. I just watched it. That's the one with Swartz Ronan. I really like that, and that's that did in fact I know came out in 2022 because I we just talked I, about it. 
literally just watched it and it said came out in like September of 2022. It was fucking hysterical. It was punny, was really good. I had so much fun. It was like a satirization of the whodunit trope and like, it was just so good. And it had great acting. Sam Rockwell, Adrian Brody, uh, Swartz Ronan, really good time. So other movies that came out this year were Top Gun Maverick, uh, Doctor yes. Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, Who? or Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, or no, Elizabeth that movie Olsen, was called <laughs> WandaVision that Part movie was Two. Called Wanda, no, that was called Wanda Maximoff in the Multiverse okay. of Madness. Jurassic World Dominion, Minions: The Rise oh, of Earth, Gru, The Batman, Thor: Love and Thunder, Black Panther: Wakanda Forever just came out. Uh, Sonic the Hedgehog two, Black Adam, Elvis. Uh, I'm just going through. Scream came out earlier this year. In oh, Nigeria. I did really like Scream. Yeah, Scream was really good. Uh, I say Jackass Forever came out. I'm just literally quickly going through all the. Enough champagne to fill the Nile. <laughs> that was the most iconic line of the of the year. That line right there. Enough champagne to fill the Nile. That's all um, I need. I wanted that put on my tombstone when I die. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Uh, Studio Six Six Six. A Medea Homecoming. Uh, the Batman. The oh, Adam that, that was the 40 hour long. Movie, yep. Right? The one that just kept on going. She provided the dozen with Zach Braff came out. Uh, the, blah, blah, blah. Everything everywhere all at once came oh, out. Oh, wait. No, 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 no. Everything everywhere all at once. I think I need to revise that. I forgot that came out this year. That was the best thing I've seen. Uh, Morbius came out. <laughs> that was the uh, the Better Nate than ever. Sonic Adventure okay. 2. Uh, Sorry, Fantastic Beast, The Secrets of Dumbledore came out with the gay storyline. Uh, was it gay? It was bad. Um, everything, Shrey. everywhere, all at once was fantastic. I mean, that really Steam your was... year with Rebel Wilson. Rebel Wilson came oh, out this I year. I did watch that. <laughs> that was not good. Downton oh, yeah, Rebel Wilson did come out. Yeah, Downton Abbey, A New Era came out. Chip and Dale, Chip and Dale's Rescue Ranger came out. Oh, I uh, enjoyed that. Bob's Burger, the movie. South Park, The Streaming Wars. Uh, so, yeah, there's been a few that's come out. Not a lot. Father of the Bride, Jennifer Lopez's Halftime. Lightyear, the new Buzz Lightyear movie that had all the controversy about Tim Allen not being cast in no, it. No, a lot of movies came out. I watched a lot of movies. I just can't remember any of them for some reason. Well, and that's the oh, thing. I'm, I'm going done. through. I'm, I'm like, done. oh, I don't remember any of these movies, to be honest. And I'm usually pretty good at remembering where, like, I do, I've never heard of half these movies. And that tells you how bad that is for you and I, who have literally been talking about movies. All <laughs> I heard of every single movie. I just didn't remember. Oh, okay. So... Now, off to the next segment, because that's how we do this. We talk about one segment, move on to the next. We talk about one segment, move on to the next. Now, this one was a little bit confusing because I, I pitched this to the idea to Michael. And then uh, before recording this, we both said, oh, I meant this way. You meant that way. Oh, no. Okay. Shit. Oh, crap. Oh, no. So this segment is the story that was the biggest non-story that the media just ran with the, the the sort of the should have not as been as big as it was michael for you what was that no i thought it was what would you, the one that was overhyped i thought it was over yeah so what was overhyped? was overhyped yeah what was the overhype story for you oh 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 uh That's what I said. Depp versus amber heard i'm really all over the place yeah i we kept seeing it and seeing it and seeing it and seeing it and seeing live streams of it. And people were like calling out sick from work to sit at their households and watch testimony. None of y'all were lawyers, not a single one of you. Y'all were sitting at home mounting all these legal defenses to get Miss Johnny Depp her money and like to get him in Pirates of the Caribbean six, basically is like, all that they're doing. Only to then turn around and he was just in a Rihanna runway video and y'all canceled her for putting him in because he's like make up your minds first of all second of all y'all were like we have to save johnny depp like 
what is going on? It was so much hype, so much media attention, like everywhere I looked for like three months. That's all it was constantly. For me, yay West. Way too much publicity around that man. Like I, every time I turned on a TV show for like, like Stephen Colbert, uh, Jimmy Fallon, I don't watch James Corden. So I don't know if he was talking about it a lot, but it seemed like every time that I was turning on the news or turning on something, uh, social media, it was all about yay West and how he was on some tirade. Understandable. You have to call it out and understandable. You have to call shit out. But the more it's it's this whole idea that if you continuously talk about something over and over and over again, it's you're not dismantling it. You're actually promoting it because yeah. you look at what happened and what he said and you go, OK, it's bad. Understandable. Unequivocally, it's bad. It's horrible. And he should be canceled or whatever you want to call. But the more people talk about it. The more people who just continuously blab their mouth off about it, people are going to go, what did he say? Oh, I want to look up Ye West. Oh, I wonder what music he's put out. So stop. (laughs) 2023, stop talking about this fucking asshole. I know he's probably a multimillionaire and he probably has more money than I'll ever get in my life, but stop it. I have in 2023, there will be a new rule imposed into the show where we do not talk about him. And all we talk about is where in the world is uh, Jason. Don't, don't even... You saw that coming a mile away. I, I'm like, it's, he's about to make some bullshit. Uh-uh, I'm not about to hear for it. Wow. I thought, I thought, I thought. Okay. I get it. 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 <laughs> um, okay. Now let's talk about the item that should have been bigger. The item that and I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about this one here because I think this should have this story should have been bigger than it actually was, and it just came out recently. And when I think about entertainment, I don't think about just music and TV and movies and all that. I think about arts and culture as a whole. And this story is a story that I I found interesting, and it just came out literally in November. And it's about a painting that was hung upside down for decades. For 70 years, the Pete (laughs) Mondrain painting hung upside down in New York City at the Museum of Modern Art. And the reason why I think this should have got a lot more play, a lot more play. I, I don't know why Michael's giving me that face. I feel like I just said something wrong here. Yeah. Oh, no, it's hysterical. This is so what? messy. Why? Like they hung their own picture upside down. They hung their own picture upside down for 70 years. And here's the funny <laughs> part. And this is the this is where I think it should have gotten a lot more play. So in 1999, the PBS kids show, Arthur, (laughs) did a show where Binky Barnes, one of the bullies on the show, had a project where he had to present a piece of art. And his piece of art was the Mundrain. And in the show, they talk about how the painting was hung upside down in the museum. And this was in the 90s when this came out. And it took them this long to go, oh, maybe we are actually hanging a painting upside down. And they looked at an original 1941 photo with the original artist. And they went, oh, we have been hanging it upside down. And this is where the story gets really fucking confusing. The museum is going, well, we've hung it this way since then, so we're just going to keep it. So they're not fixing the issue. They're keeping it. So let's stop. Let's rotate the fucking photo so that way it's hanging properly, and we'll go from there. I feel like they had to have known. I feel like they had to. That's, I can't. Exactly. But still, 
No one, like, there's like one or two stories about it, and no one's picking it up. Should have been a bigger story. Should have been a bigger story, and I think it will be a bigger story. Oh, and speaking about art, so are you climate activists who are out there who are throwing goo and like soup on priceless paintings in so the earth. they they picked one that had a glass case covering it not not this week's what was this week's uh, again? one in germany got thrown a piece that's called life and death uh and i think oh with Klimt? yeah they uh oh yeah Oh, they threw black oil. Yeah. Stop it, everyone. You're not making your point. Understandable, there's a climate crisis going on, and we're not supposed to talk about politics on this segment, but you're not making your point at all. You're actually coming off as brats. And yes, you're trying to make a point. There's better ways to make a point than throwing oil and soup on paintings. Michael? I'm just looking at it now. I just, that's, okay. It's one of my favorite pieces. I've just been detached from the world. I can tell. Uh, what about yourself? Any stories that should have been bigger in your mind? I feel like we didn't talk about Ezra Miller enough. I agree with that. I agree wholeheartedly with that. Like they were starting a cult. They were like fighting everyone in Hawaii. They were like abusing people. Like they're kidnapping. Like. I feel like every day it was some new fresh hell that popped up from Ezra Miller and like no one was talking about it. No one was discussing what they were doing. And then like the minute the they were going to pull the movie from them, Ezra all of a sudden started apologizing and went on this like, I'm going to rehab and apologizing tour to save their movie. Like, is that what happened? Yeah, they Warner Brothers was like, we're going to stop your movie from moving forward if you don't get your shit together and then all of a sudden Ezra Miller has been on an apology tour and like vanished but I feel like no one was talking about it but me I talked about it with you on the show I know (laughs) but like it was one of those like no like it was not so big and it should have been bigger I agree wholeheartedly um so we're going to come back and we're going to come back with our top three uh, segments here in a few seconds. Um, so actually we might have four, depending on if Michael will agree to the one during the break that I can talk about. So we'll be right back in a few seconds, everyone. We pride ourselves on going beyond that 15 second sound bite. Be sure to hit that subscribe button today to be kept in the loop of all the great episodes that are coming up on the show. Also, Click on the links in the show notes and follow our social media pages as well. And welcome back. Yes, we are actually going to do four segments to end this off because, well, it's my show and it's 2022 and it's just been a shit show of a year. So we want to just add an extra segment. So and this new segment that we were not going to talk about beforehand, but now we are going to be is the what the fuck is happening in 2022 news. In 2022, I will be honest, there have been people who have been canceled for appropriate reasons. There have been people who have been canceled in the past for appropriate reasons. And for some strange freaking reason, we are allowing people who have done horrible, horrendous things to come back into our society. Understandable. And I will preface this by saying this. Preface it by saying this. I know I've been canceled in the past. I know I've said horrendous things in the past. I know there is a long road ahead. I still work at it every day to make sure that I I correct the sins of my past. But when you give someone like Leah Michelle a platform like Fanny Bryce in Funny Girl or Funny Lady or whatever the hell you want to fucking call it, And you give them standing ovations over and over again. We are rewarding people who have done horrendous things. And until we stop doing that, I'm going to say this. Fuck off, people. She is a horrible, horrible human being and should not be given the credence or even airtime 
that people are giving her. <laughs> Do you agree, Michael? Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, we literally made a whole category so I could say fuck Leah Michelle. Um, fuck Leah Michelle. Uh, she is trash. She's always been trash. She's very talented. She's incredibly talented. Um, at singing, you know, I'm not going to sit there and I'm not going to deny her that her flowers. I don't actually she's like her singing. as a singer. I don't oh, find she, her good. I mean, she does that knockoff Barbara Streisand thing, but she's a very talented singer, especially when it comes to the Broadway singing, which is a very specific style. She's fucking brilliant. She's stunning. She's stellar. Her acting is knockoff Barbara Streisand. And sometimes her singing is knockoff Barbara Streisand, but I mean, Barbara did kind of reinvent the wheel with that. It used to be Ethel Merman and, and Barbara kind of said, mm, I'm going to do this instead. So I just, I, especially with the mistreatment of Beanie and like, it was just not a good look for her. Like just this whole thing. And she hasn't learned anything. She's not grown from it. She's, she's trash. Like it'd be one thing if she learned and grew and like moved forward from it, but she hasn't. She's just trash. I agree whole heartedly and there you go there that's her that was the segment that we added in just for michael to say fuck you leah michelle so fuck <laughs> you, leah michelle here we are um so i want to turn i want to go with the biggest loser now who in your opinion was the biggest loser of 2022 michael kanye really i he got dropped from all these brands he got a divorce. His, his wife started dating Pete Davidson. And then he kind of like was not well, was not getting the side that people thought because when he was going after Pete Davidson and it was very unhinged and very scary, people were not on his side really about it. Like, I think Kanye is the biggest loser of the year with regards to everything that happened to him. And just the fact that he really doesn't have the cultural pull anymore that he thought he did and there finally was a limit to his his actions and he's facing those consequences i think it's i think it's kanye i i I will agree but i don't want to double up on what you say so i'm gonna i'm gonna add my own little caveat here and that is (laughs) it, it just came out today that david beckham is a brand ambassador for qatar for the fifa world cup Now, for those who don't know, um, as a gay man, I don't visit places that don't accept gay men. So this Mm -hmm. is why I will never go to Jamaica. This is why I will never go to Qatar, because they will punish you. They will throw stones at you, and they will hang you and imprison you for nine years for being gay. David Beckham was a gay cultural icon in the 2000s. He married a Spice Girl, and he is now representing as a brand ambassador the country of Qatar, who is hosting the FIFA World Cup, which is soccer, not our soccer, not, well, our soccer. It's football. football. Yeah. So I will say if David <clears throat> Beckham does not fix this today, because the, the Qatar games are about to happen and this is airing after it, David Beckham needs to be canceled and maybe even Victoria Beckham as well. And they need to go away and never do anything in the public again. All your goodwill at Queen Elizabeth's funeral of standing in line with everyone else has non- now gone out the window because you're standing with a country that discriminates and kills and punishes people for the people they love. So David Beckham, Fuck you if you don't fix this today. I'm getting a little hot. We're going in hot in 2023. You're getting a little okay? heated. Wait, 2023 is the year that we don't give two shits, okay, Michael? She's, get, she's getting a little warm over there. It is. Um, but who is it? So for you, Michael, big winner of 2022. Who was the one that made the biggest waves? So the biggest winner of 2022 was the Oscars. Um, It was so trendy. That slap made them relevant. And to be quite honest, we were talking about the Oscars for months because of that slap. We still Um, are. So we still are. And because people now are like, ooh, are we going to see somebody smack another motherfucker? Their ratings are probably going to be better than ever next year so obviously the oscars are the big winners i mean also britney spears but i mean she could kind of be counted 
as 2021 because she technically was freed in 2021, um, but kind of didn't have it seen to light till this year. But I think it's those two. Do you think the Oscars will still have a role to play in the future? What do you mean a role to play? Like, do you think it's going to be uh, televised from now on? Because more and more people, you're seeing the ratings slip every year, right? It may be, there may be a bump next year, but I don't think there will be because Will Smith is being canceled and no longer allowed to be there for 10 years. Do you think the Oscars televised is still a thing that people want to watch? I feel and like, so, yes. talk, Talking about that is not as two people who literally did almost four hours on the Oscars this year. Uh, but do you <laughs> think so? Yeah, I mean, it would be very shocking if they fully stopped airing it. But I mean, I think over time, award shows are just kind of going to go away. But as of right now, they are pretty relevant still. Artists really do care. But until the artists stop caring, we're probably not going to see it as much. It's, it's an event. People do have parties for it. People do watch it, follow it to some level. I mean people still care whether or not they watch the awards shows, they still care enough about it. And the minute you take it off the TV is when people don't care about it. Now for me, who do you think I'm going to choose here? Winner? Yeah. Um, I do not know. On September 9th, the biggest winner was revealed. After 74 years of waiting, he was finally uh, anointed as Shut the fuck king. Up. Charles the third. My big winner of 2022 is King Charles. We are now in a new era of monarchy within Canada and the Commonwealth. Uh, King Charles the third will go down in history, probably as a transition monarch from him to will, but he is the first after the longest serving monarch in the world, in the Commonwealth. Queen Elizabeth II, God rest her soul. Um, I believe he was the big winner. And in essence, the Commonwealth countries all around the world were also the big winners as well. So I believe with full sincerity that the big winner of 2022 will be King Charles III. Don't think so? No, we hate Charles and Camilla. I like Camilla. Stop. Stop. I do. Um, actually, I want to rechange. The big, big winner <laughs> is obviously you and I, because we have both been playing Pokemon nonstop since it's come out. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I am so ready for Friday. I mean, I'm so excited that from Friday so many months ago, uh, it came out. I haven't put it down. Um, I can tell you this, that my <laughs> husband, my husband, Bought a Nintendo Switch just to play Pokemon. So we have been playing nonstop and we're excited. Uh, we have the, we like, I have a Nintendo Switch Lite, which he is so graciously accepted as his now. And I get the Nintendo Switch that attaches to the TV. So I'm looking forward to that. So all my games that were on the Nintendo Switch, I had to redo all over again. So for the last month and a half since the Pokemon <laughs> Scarlet and Violet came out. I've been playing nonstop. I can tell you that much for sure. <laughs> and that's oh. including during my surgery. I was like, what? Surgery? What? <laughs> Party. So excited. Parasite. <laughs> so with that, <coughs> we're going to go into the final segment. And this is the one that I, I, I'm not sure if I'm not sure which one I'm going to go with. I have three. Mm. But for you, the biggest news story of the year in 2022 for entertainment was what? Have you been, you followed the Don't Worry Darling drama, right? Oh, yes. I forgot about that. The, oh. oh, I cannot forget about it. It is quite literally all I want to think about. Like Harry Styles and Olivia Wilde are like separated now, aren't they? <laughs> What? Did I miss this? I don't know. It's December, so it could have happened. <laughs> Hold on. I can't see. Olivia Wilde and Harry Styles' relationship. Um, oh, they're still together. 
as of oh. recording this, as of airing. God, did you not see that one thing that happened to that one person? <laughs> um, I think it was the biggest drama and it was never ending and it still is never ending. And it's just like every day, it's like more and more. And I more heard and it's like, a bad movie. Oh, it's, Florence Pugh is probably going to get nominated for it is what I've heard. It's a terrible movie with her giving one of the performances of her lifetime. If she wins, she cannot thank anyone <laughs> except <laughs> oh she'll God, only I thank Chris Pine. Win. Chris Pine. She'll be like, thanks, Chris. You're an awesome person. And that's it. I literally just want her to go up there and be like, thank you, Chris Pine. Thank you, Shia LaBeouf. Fuck you, Olivia Wilde. I need her to get nominated. I need her to win it. Like more than anything, I need it. Well, who knows what will happen. By the time this airs, we'll have three weeks until the Oscar pool starts. So here we go. Um, So (laughs) my big news story is kind of close to home. And yes, it is an entertainment story, but it is a story that I think I need to tell more often. I think I need to promote it more often. 2022 was the year that our show, the cross border interviews with Chris Brown, along with Michael and his entertainment uh, rundown and his uh, contributions, we passed over 1.5 million streams slash downloads. We are growing like there's no, we've never seen before. People are tuning in on a regular basis. People are what, listening to us when we're not even on. So thank you. Uh, thank you for making this my biggest news story of the year. Because I, when I saw that we had passed 1.5 million as of November, I don't know what we're going to be like in December, but as of November, 1.5 million streams and downloads of our show from around the world and for almost three weeks we were the number five podcast in five countries and i could not have asked for uh more dedicated listeners viewers streamers thank you um this show has grown so much over the last four years. Michael has been a big part of that. And I know tomorrow's episode on the 24th will be with Ricardo and I, and we'll be diving a little bit more deep into this, but uh, this whole recap of the year, I've been saying, thank you. So Michael, uh, as, as much as I want to thank my listeners and my viewers and my streamers, I want to thank you for being part of this journey as well, because you have contributed more than you probably could have ever imagined. And I know that the time has been tough and challenging to get us to record some of these episodes and trying to fit in our schedules as one is on the East Coast, one's on the West Coast, but you have helped me grow this show more than you can imagine and you help me chal- uh, break through a lot of my challenges that I've dealt with this year with the chemo, with the radiation, with my surgery. So um, from the bottom of my heart, Michael, thank you so much. You have been an honest friend. You have been an honest uh, partner in this show. I can't wait to see what 2023 has in store for us. And you will not, you do not, you your friendship and your partnership will mean so much to me. So thank you so much, Michael. You you do not know what your friendship has meant to me. So thank you. Hey, you're making me cry over your bitch. Oh, fuck me. Um, so with that. Um, as I said, in 20, uh, tomorrow we will be sitting down with my husband and we'll be talking about our year. Um, you think our waterworks have been hard so far? Just wait till that episode. Uh, for everyone here at the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown, uh, happy fifth day of Hanukkah. Uh, happy Christmas. Merry Christmas on Saturday. And uh, hug your loved ones because you never know how much time you have left on this earth. So with that, This has been a look back on 2022 in the entertainment industry with Chris Brown and Michael Nichols Pate for the cross border interviews with Chris Brown. Have yourself an excellent night and remember everyone keep talking.